Evening. <clears throat> oh my god, the guy's flown by. Right. Uh, as you can tell, I'm talking about Sebastian Rogers because so much keeps happening. You think nothing else could come out of this apart from finding Sebastian and getting him home. But he's getting more and more like a rabbit hole. Right, every day something else comes out, and you just like digging and digging, and you're not getting it. It's not getting anywhere, and it's getting to the point where um, you you go and start having two groups, right? Especially when it comes to the parents, the mother and the stepfather, because. I just think he will only talk to people, right, who will kiss the ground he walks on. That's it. If you're a yes sir, no sir, three bags full sir, Batman, then he'll talk to you. But if you're one of these people like me, who has got an opinion, and will state that opinion, whether they like it or not, they won't talk to you. I don't particularly care if he talks to me. I live in the UK. I don't care about him. I care about Sebastian. Right? But it annoys me when he will publicly out other, other YouTubers. Right? By saying... He's not had any messages of a certain YouTuber or anything like that. And yet we've got proof that this YouTuber has sent him the messages. You know what I mean? And he's not replied. Now, all of a sudden, he started to reply to these messages. And then you go, but he won't do a live with this YouTuber because he doesn't think it's fair that this YouTuber makes money from Sebastian. In a way, I'm right. I, I agree there. I don't think any YouTuber 
should make money from any missing child. I'm not making any money. I because I haven't hit that gong yet where I can monetize my site. You know what I mean? But you can choose whether to have that video put out and have it monetized or not. When the time comes, you can choose to have your, any video monetized or not. Right? So he said he will donate any money he makes from that interview to any charity. Right? When and last night when the father was on the live, um, because of the time zone, I see a lot of videos the next day. So people were sending in down these uh, payments, right? And yes, she was putting all that money towards the billboards to keep the big billboard these billboards up for Sebastian. Right? Fair dues. Right? It's £25 a day. I think it's for each billboard and it's got two. They've got two up. So she's got enough now, I think, maybe to keep it up for another three or four days. So to the beginning of next week, maybe. Right? But once that money runs out, it, the billboards stop getting promoted. So I can see where she's coming from, and I totally agree. These billboards are out there. They're catching the driver's eyes. You know what I mean? It's out there. She's keeping his name and his face out there. But for him to say, oh, wow, well, you'll make money, this YouTuber don't make that much money, really, from YouTube. Believe it or not, people go, Oh, but you must make a lot. People must make a lot on YouTube. You've got to have literally thousands and thousands of subscribers to make money off YouTube. You really do. Right? And I'm not here for that. I don't care if I've got, I've got 35. 35 subscribers. I'm new. I've only been in this game, what? About a month? four weeks right i'm not worried about how many subscribers if i only had one subscriber i'd be fine with that but the more subscribers i get the more pit the youtube will push and the more likes i get on each live or video i put out youtube pushes it out more and that's my aim is to get my videos out there so other people can see this right to see what's going on and what's happening and how it's progressing. I'm not here at all for any money gang. I, I could put my pay, I don't have a, what is it? Cash app? I don't have that. Uh, I don't, I've got PayPal, I will not use it. I could put it on it, but I'm not. Because I'm not here for that. Right? So, I was watching this live, this live from last night, this morning. And we'll watch it. We'll go through it. Like I said, in the description, it's got that. But I also want to go through what the TBI or whatever I've said. Right? But I've got to find it again. <laughs> I don't know if I've put it on my Facebook or not. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, I don't know. Did I put it on my Facebook? Is this it? Yes. Right. Oh, crap, so stay up there. So, we're just going to look at it. This, what the TBI say, or FBI, whatever.
But I just wanted to put out the, the live, the feature we will be watching. I like that YouTuber. I really do. But people were asking questions because the stepfather and the mother had come on the live. And I think the mods were just a bit over cautious or a bit heavy handed, whatever you want to do. Because a lot of comments, questions were being deleted. And one comment got deleted because apparently they said he mentioned another YouTuber. He didn't. They didn't mention another YouTuber, yet his comment got deleted. So they were deleting comments. The mods were. I thought, I, I just sat there watching it this morning thinking, what the hell is going on here? This comment's being deleted left, right, and flipping center. Right? I think, and the father said himself, the stepfather said, no, ask me any questions you want. I don't care. We're here to answer these questions. But then the mods were deleting some questions. And I think it was very unfair that a lot of the questions weren't being asked. And it was questions they didn't want to ask. It was the harder questions. Like, anyone can say, oh, well, did he have any shoes on or was he barefoot? Did, and the mother said, sort of like, replied, I don't, well, you'll hear it in the interview. You'll hear it in the interview. <clears throat> but we're just going to look at this at the moment. Because this is one thing he refer refers to. He tells us to go and read this. Because all the information we need is in here. Right? And I go on facts. I go on facts. And my gut. My gut comes into it as well. So, the facts are, he went missing 21, 22 days ago now. Hi, MG. I saw you in the chat of that live when I was watching it this morning. <laughs> and um, so he refers to this, the TBI newsroom thing. So we're going to look at it to see what they have to say. That's okay, MG. That's okay. You have your son's got after school things or whatever. I understand. You know, I didn't have all that when I had my kids. He didn't have after school activities. He really didn't. UK isn't known for its after school activities. Like, if you wanted to get them to go to football, you had to sign up for a club somewhere, somewhere else, away from the school, or dance lesson. You have to go to these certain dance places. We never had anything with the school, like after school clubs. Anyway, so we're going to look at this. And anyway, you've seen the interview anyway. I was in that live last night. So. It says here, Amber Alert, but now I've read it an endangered alert. So I'm not sure if it's gone back down to an endangered alert or not. The third the 15, 2024, on February 26, 2024, 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers disappeared from his summer county home, lead, leading a large-scale ground search that resulted in first responders covering over 2,000 total mile, miles in the effort to find him. That's a lot of miles. That's a lot of miles. We continue to work with the Sumner County Sheriff's Office and the FBI to, hold on, I just need to do something. I 
I was disappointed in the today I paid to be your best friend. Hello, Brian. Oh, right, that's it. Good to see you, Brian. It's falling. Right. Change that. Right, along the bottom now, I've got the, all the information you need, but it is also in the description as well. So, uh, but we continue to work with the Sumner County Sheriff's Office and the FBI to both proactively pursue information that may be relevant to the search for Sebastian and to pursue any tips or pieces of information that come in. We have not forgotten about Sebastian. I don't think anyone's going to let you forget about Sebastian because they forgot about little Summer Wells. They forgot about her because I swear to God, they could prosecute their parents just for child neglect, if nothing else. And they haven't. Much of the work currently being done to bring Sebastian home. Sebastian home may not be necessarily be public or visible. But agents, detectives and intelligence analysts continue to work around the clock to view every bit of information available. Sebastian's family has remained cooperative since the search began and have done whatever law enforcement has asked them. But you're not saying, right? They're not actually saying they are clear, right? Like in... <coughs> Little Monkey's case, what's his name? Michael, Michael. Is it Michael? Uh, oh, oh, God, I feel bad now. I should know that. Um, Michael Monkey, oh, whatever. And when there's one case, the, the police have stood there and said that the parents are clear. They're clear, John. They're not anything involved but in this case they're not they haven't said that right at this stage in the investigation there are a few clues to indicate what happened to sebastian or where he may be there is no not proof at this time that there was any criminal element involved in his disappearance so what investigation are they running then We all know when it goes to an investigation, it's a criminal investigation. But also there's not any proof that there is not a criminal element involved. That's a bit, hmm, wishy-washy. Well, there isn't any proof, but at the other side, there is no, there is no proof. Oh, wow. Well. So agents and investigators are viewing any possibility at all that might indicate where Sebastian is. In order to preserve the integrity of this investigation, we cannot discuss many of the specifics surrounding the case. I understand that. But we now, we know how many people care about Sebastian and what has been done, and is still being done to bring him home. Also, we want to caution the public about putting, in, putting too much stock into information being presented in various media forms that is inaccurate or incomplete and could be damaging to the investigation. And we all know what they mean by that. It's that leaked video, that one minute, 20 something second video that got leaked. Right? So, information that has been released to the TBI, right? Now, really, all this is the same as what they did for Summer Wells, right? They did this. They put out the questions that had been asked and what had been done, right? Information that has been released by the TBI and some of the county sheriff's office throughout the investigation including a list of frequently asked questions, can be reviewed below, below. Question, what areas have you searched? A. Within the several first several days of the search, more than 2,000 miles were searched, pardon me, on foot. 
Many of these areas were initially searched and searched again. again. Law enforcement have officers of searching neighborhoods, surrounding neighborhoods, schools, and many other areas of the county by the foot. Bloodhounds and hangers have searched the same areas. Right? But really, what they should have done, they should have had the dogs go through everything first. Right? The dogs should have been searching around the house first, and before they had anyone else do any searches, they should have let the dogs search them areas. So then they wouldn't trample down any possible scent of Sebastian. Right? They've been aerial searches with helicopters, drones, and a fixed wing plane. These aerial searches have been conducted on multiple days and multiple multiple nights using thermal imaging technology. Sebastian's residence, the yard, the house, the vehicles have all been searched multiple times. The neighbourhood where Sebastian lives has been canvassed. Neighbours' houses have been searched. Sebastian is autistic, autistic and his family says is drawn to water. Hmm. Hmm. Pools in the neighbourhood were searched. Dietrins were brought in and bodies of water around the neighbourhood and beyond the, that area were searched, including caves. Right? Well, they searched everywhere then. Okay, they give up. Question, what about the technology aspect? Have you collected security video from area homes and businesses? Have some cell phones been checked? Many neighbours and businesses have provided video provide your video from home and business surveillance systems. We are grateful for that cooperation. The video has been collected and from the beginning of the investigation has been analysed and enhanced where possible by tech experts with the TBI, FBI and Secret Service. To date, nothing gathered from these video systems has been determined to be significant. No, because it's too flipping dark. Too dark. They didn't do it in broad daylight, they're doing it in, on the night time where it's pitch black. We do to caution that some surveillance videos have been shared in the public may have been misinterpreted or misidentified or not shown in its entirety. Yet, and we know which one it is. It has been determined that it does not hold any evidential significance to this investigation. Numerous search warrants have been executed, cell phone data has been analysed and any other valuable digital evidence has been collected. Search and documented information was collected from Sebastian's gaming system and has been analysed with help from the FBI. Vehicles that were placed in the area or at or around that time of Sebastian's disappearance have been accounted for. These videos and all the electronic evidence that has already been reviewed, it's often also been investigated, right? So, uh, so when we ask the stepfather a question, and he goes, refer back to this, that answers it all. Well, that tells us nothing. Tells us what every investigation tells us. What they're doing every investigation. Right? Didn't tell us anything really. So I'm just really annoyed. And something else someone picked up on. Oh, oh, before I forget, I found the clip, the video, where the grandmother was in chat. Right? And she was saying things like uh, Sebastian would not have gone out the house without shoes on. He would not have left the house, especially on the night time, without an adult or someone else with him. That Sebastian was scared of his stepfather. Now, was he scared of the stepfather because he could be in trouble? Or scared of the stepfather in general? Um, and um, 
But like in that in that live, people saying about his stepfather's daughter, how he didn't want his daughter around Sebastian. Why? Why would he not want his daughter around Sebastian? He's not going to hurt her. You know what I mean? He's not going to hurt your daughter. You know what I mean? And as a mother, I'd be fighting to keep my son. There's no way I would say to my father, well, you have the son because we're going to get my husband's uh, daughter now. No way would I be doing anything like that. You know what I mean? It, there's a lot of questions he didn't answer. But that was because a lot of the questions were being deleted. Right? Now some, I don't know, I've noticed that in two chats now where they don't like other YouTubers' names mentioned. Unless they're in the chat already or in the uh, live. They don't like every YouTuber's names being mentioned. I don't know why. Because if someone mentions someone a YouTuber's name, then all oh god. All they've got to do, like if someone come in my chat and mention another YouTuber's name, right? I would just literally acknowledge that YouTuber in the description. What's the harm in putting in the description when you put video out? Before you actually put the video out, putting in the description, acknowledge, such and such, and giving the link out, you know what I mean? What's the harm in that? So, I don't know, I just think, what are you saying yesterday? And, she was very, very, very quiet. She spoke very softly and quietly last night. Was it because she was tired? Because it was late? I don't know. Well, from what I could hear, she, she didn't say a lot. He spoke most of it. Right? So, he didn't really say it. She didn't say it a lot. And, uh, He's saying how, oh, oh, right. I'm going to put it up on here because mainly because I won't have people tell me or tell us YouTubers what we can and cannot put up on our pages. So I'm putting it up here. Hold on. Oh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Facebook. Um. Right, uh, it's on my Facebook page. Where is it? I will share it on my lives. I said I'm gonna do it and I will do it. Right, this is the um, go from the page. Right? Now, this is the GoFundMe page that is to help Seth Rogers Okay Right? This is a GoFundMe page Now, apparently, the families, the mother, the stepfather and the father all agreed not to do any GoFundMe pages because apparently it would harm the investigation. Hmm, I don't know how. Now this father, Seth Rogers, believe me, my heart goes out to him. It really does. Right? Uh, hold on, someone's just come to him. Okay, I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking. Um. Uh, 
Yes, how done? I'll share that in a mini. I'll share them in a mini. Uh, so, because to be honest with you, I was watching that live. So when I said about this and then I spoke about how he sent around and said, no, I wasn't going, I didn't say that. I just said to her, please take it down because it can harm the investigation. We all agreed we wouldn't do this, but she went ahead and done this. Now, this isn't going to harm the investigation. This is going to help. This will help because this money is helping their father, who's at the moment, can't work, won't work, right? It'd be no use at work, even if he did go back to work. His mind wouldn't be on the job, right? So it's promising me from going back to work until a conclusion of this comes out. I'm going to post that because you know what? I don't care what anyone says on my page. This is my page, and if they don't like it, I hate the stepdad. I do too. I think he's... There's just some oh, about him I don't like. He's controlling. Very controlling, I think. Anyway, so he turned around and said that if any harm comes to, if this in, investigate, if this ruins the investigation and any harm comes to my steps on i will get the uh, injuries on me exactly yeah how, exactly how can this harm the finding of their son it's helping because it's helping the step uh, the the bio father seth rogers stay out there boots on the ground looking for his son it's, it's to help pay for bills because it's not working you still got electric and gas and water and whatever else you have to pay for. You still got all those bills to pay for. Right? So how can that be hurting? And it got me so mad when I heard that this morning. So mad. And you'll hear it in the interview yourself. You can all hear that interview. Yeah, uh, uh, to be honest with you, they did have it at 3,000, right? And then it went to 5,000 and now it's gone, been put up to 8. Because so many people are helping him. I don't see anything wrong with that. So please, if you can't help by going out there searching, like I can't, I can only help by doing this, what I do here, by getting his name, his picture out there. If you if you want to help, please help the father. Donate as little as you can. It doesn't have to be a big man. You know what I mean? I think, I just think the uh, stepfather uh, is a bit jealous because everyone is for the father. Everyone feels so bad for that father, for Seth. And my heart is going out to him every day. When I see this boy's picture, my heart goes out to him. And... Uh, he has digs at him as well. Did you notice that, MG? During that interview, he'd have a little dig at the uh, father every now and again. Like, try to be one better than the father. I'm sorry, mate. You're the stepfather. You're not the blood father. Forget yourself. And we also noticed how you referred to Sebastian. 
after they've included Martin, they get back on the set in the beginning of the episode log. Yeah. I think Seth has started to talk out because of the, the lies they were putting out there. I don't think everything, well, yeah, exactly. And, but you see, Chris, um, Seth as isn't controlling, he isn't manipulative, he's the only care in the world is his son. All Chris cares about is himself. And if I had 10,000 subscribers on my channel, if I did, right? And he said, I'll come and do an interview. I'll go, you can go take a hike, mate. No way. I wouldn't have him on my page. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have that stepfather on here. Yeah, I think he has his suspicions. I think he's more Chris than Kate than the mother, though. But someone stated, um, it sounded like she's on medication last night. She might be. She might be on medication to help her sleep, to help her just get through each day, you know what I mean? So... But that wasn't a, I'm sorry, but that video that was released was not Sebastian. Yeah, I saw him, yeah. Yeah, he was in the chat, I saw it this morning. I thought, yeah, he's been watching to see what you're saying. Right? Because that's the only reason I think he spoke out, because I don't think he wanted to speak out. Because if he did, he could have reached out a lot sooner than... But then again, he wasn't going to reach out then. It was only because someone, uh, that Nick Gears, seeing him at the uh, vigil, then went up to him and got that interview. It's only because of that. I don't think he would have done that interview then. But you see, I think it's eating him up inside. You know what I mean? And I think this case, like, any other YouTuber is on at the moment. Well, no, it's the same case, but he's going down a different pathway. Right? You know, I don't know what anyone's thoughts are on this, but I'll say the YouTuber's name. Because then again, I'm not going to be censored. Unless I'm told, if you say this, your videos won't get put out, then I'll have to reword it in another way. But the YouTube I'm talking about is J.R.R. Investigates. Yes, he's a felon or a criminal, whatever you want to call him. But he's changed his life, he's done his time, he's paid his price, he's done his time, he's come out, he's changed his life. I don't know, you make a comment that. He knows her very well, and he knows her since they were little. Hmm. Right. Yeah. But, um, what was I saying? I've oh, got my mind, she's gone blank again. But I think he started speaking out because of the lies that are coming out. I don't think things were as nice and as polite and cat or nicey nicey between the father, the stepfather and the mother. I don't think it was. I think they had problems with Sebastian being able to go on the internet at their at the, at the father's house. Even though, like I said, the father had set perimeters. Right? 
he wasn't allowed to use the headphones. Right, so he couldn't chat with anyone while gaming. He could just play the game. His father was watching him. He knew who he was playing against. The people who he was playing against would message their father and say, do you know your son's logged into your account? Yes, I'm sitting right by you. So he wasn't one of his fathers. Okay, you go and play that. Put the headphones on, you can chat a lot. You know what I mean? He wasn't like that. He watched what he did and who he was playing with. And that's what I say. You can put perimeters on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know there's more M MG to JL. I know there is. I know. But the way I look at it, he's, he's on the ground. He's on the ground. He's out there. And he don't just concentrate on this case. There's other cases and things he looks at. And he goes out and about. And he's out there. And he's talking to people. And he's getting information. Right? And... That's what I appreciate about him, that he is out there. Yes. Yeah, he did. So, um, I, but then again, it's like I said at the beginning, because JLR has told him directly, I was watching the video not long ago and where he's shown the proof of the text messages he'd been sending. Yeah, I take him for the knowledge that he brings to us. Like there's some things he might say and I think, hmm, right, okay, yeah. You know what I mean? So not everything I it says I believe. I like to watch his videos when he's talking to anyone because then he can't, nothing can be hidden unless he uh, manipulates the video, edits it. Because he don't go live, live very often at all, videos he does, you know what I mean? Sometimes he goes live, especially to, it, if it's in the morning, he might do live. <laughs> I'd like to see that, MG. You know what I mean? Because, because when, <clears throat> it's getting like, as JLR said, it's getting like the Summer Wales case. You've got the people who are on the mother and the stepfather side, and you've got the people on the father side. Right? But it shouldn't be like that. We're all here for one thing, and that is to get Sebastian home. Right? He wasn't, no, he tells it as he sees it. That's what I like about JLR. He won't hide, he won't go all softly, softly like some YouTubers will. Because some YouTubers say, well, if you go hard on them, you're not going to get any information out of them. Well, don't come on my... If they don't want me to go hard on them, don't come on my lives. And that's just a warning. Because when I, if I ever get to that position where I have get that chance to have someone live on my show, I will tell them then, don't come on my show because unless you are prepared to get the hard questions asked. Because I'm not going to go easy on them. Hell no. If I think they're guilty, I will say so. I won't go all nice and nice and then maybe say something in another group somewhere else about it. You know what I mean? It's like talking about someone behind the back, stabbing them in the back. I can't do that. I'd rather say it to the well, say it to them directly. Yeah. We don't want that, MG, we don't want that to come out like um, Summer Wells has. And 
we're all here, as I said, we're all here to do one thing and find Sebastian to get his picture out there, get his name out there, his description, everything about what he likes to do, where, what things he likes to see. You know what I mean? Are you? That'd be good. I can't get there. I'm in the UK. And I've got a fear of flying, so I'm never going to get to the USA because I've got one hell of a fear of flying. I really have. I can manage maybe an hour, an hour and a half, two hours at the very most on a flight. But that's about it. I could probably fly from here over to the Europe, to like France or somewhere. But that's not a very long flight, really. Or from here, I get from Scotland down to the England, which is about an hour's flight. And that's it. I can't go any further. So, MG, could you take a video while you're there, when you go? Because a woman has asked me, actually, to cover that case. Ooh. To do a, to cover some of our case, and I don't want, I really, really don't want it because it's going down a rabbit hole, a bit like this one is, right? And it's got to stop. All this, I'm not talking to you because you will only want the money from me. No, we don't. We want your side of the story, and you've got to be prepared to take the hard questions. Do you? Oh, that'd be good. No, I can't do it. I can't get on a plane. <laughs> I couldn't get on a plane. <laughs> I really couldn't. I'm, fe I'm feeling sick just thinking about ever getting on a plane. Steve Nicks, never heard of him. I don't think I have. Is he a, a British YouTuber? So... Anyway, as I said, when I heard about what he said about to his sister, to Seth Rogers' sister about this, I went, no way, that's it. Every time I do anything now with Sebastian, I'm going to put this out there. I'm going to. Right? So please, if anyone can help, please do. Right? I am going to. Where's that video now? Take that. Get rid of that mini. Hold on. What was that? Uh, last one on his mum. Yeah. Right, what I'll do, I'll share this first. I just want to share this. Right, I don't know if I can zoom in. I don't think I can. No, I can't zoom in. Oh, so annoying. Right, I'll have to uh, sort that out and, and try and put it on another thing so I can zoom in on it. I can't, you know what? So I said to this woman, I said, I will think about doing a live on Summer Wells, Moon Wells case. Right? But I think if I put, as soon as I put her name on in the description, it's good. It's just like clickbait. It's just like throwing the rod out there with the bait on the end to catch the fish. You know what I mean? And I don't want that. Fleetwood Mac. Oh, God, Steve Nix. Yeah. Do I know I know groups like you said if you just said did, did I know the band Fleetwood Mac I was going oh yeah but don't ask me the names of the people in them the only one I would know would be the uh, Queen <laughs> from Queen who sadly passed oh she's going to be in Scotland this summer. Oh, I wonder if she's coming to the uh, one of the um, 
park or festivals up here. Hmm. Be interesting to find that. I'm going to have to look that up now. Anyway, so we're going to look at this interview. And then I can find it again. I know I've got it on my Facebook page. Because I saved it today. Any videos I see which I find in anything interesting. Which I find. I will share onto my page. So... All right. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? That's it. Queen. I love Queen. No, get back here. I I used to grew up with that band because my brother, you know, when um the singer died, Freddie Mercury, my brother got cried. He cried because my brother was a big fan. Of Queen, he really was a big fan. But I grew up with all the rock groups like Black Sabbath, uh, White Snake. <laughs> I grew up with all that sort of thing, and then I had another brother who was a big fan of um, what was his name? Oh, I can't think of his name. I'll, I'll think of it, but I can't think of it. But anyone. <laughs> I'm trying to find it and I can't find it. I'm going to share this video. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to Facebook. Yeah, it's on my Facebook page. So. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right, just stop that minute. Right. Now I'm going, to, I've got to go back. Right back. No, not too far back. Start from here, right? Now there are three other uh, YouTubers on this chat, and I have acknowledged them, right? In the description, I have acknowledged them, and I've also. So I'm, I'm going to do something. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to do it because I'm not having me. I'm not having me. Well, there's that there, and I'm also going to show this disclaimer. It's a copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowances. Oh, that's ten years after I was born. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship and research. Notice criticism, criticism, right, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing non-profit educational or personal use tips the balance in favour of fair use. The video is made for entertainment purposes and is transformative in nature. Okay, so I'm got that, and I've got it up in my corner up there. So please don't come for me. But we're going to watch this now, and it's quite long, so we'll I'll literally skip through a little bit of it. Okay, 
it is quite long. So, hold on, let's get this bit out. All right. Lots of people donate to like, um, so many wonderful, amazing people in this chat. Um, we're going to be able to keep the billboards up um, until um, after next Monday. So, um, so another, we've got a whole another week. That we're so, so all the money that was donated in your chat last night is going to these billboards, which I think is a fabulous idea, fabulous thing to do. I really do. So she's not doing this for herself. She's doing it to get Sebastian's name and picture out there. And she said, if there's another place that the parents can think of where they, where they, pay, they could put a billboard, let them know. And she's looking to getting another billboard to put up. Right? We're going to be able to run the billboards, which is amazing. Well, thank you and to everybody that has contributed and been a part of this from the from the start to current. Y'all are very much appreciated in the chat. You have to know that it means so much to them because these billboards and listen, Chris, also, if there is another location that you and Katie would like to have a billboard, um, you can, you know, let me know and I'll be happy to get another billboard going. And I can look into it if you think there's another location that would be good and we can get another one going up um just just let me know and we'll make yes, it happen okay so um besides gaming what are th other things that sebastian likes to do i love he likes to fish he loves to play on playgrounds um we get the little build little things with me. That's really cool. And you said that Sebastian didn't really have a lot of friends. He didn't really have any friends. He has a couple of friends at school. Do you think it's possible that, and which you told me before you didn't think so, but do you think there's any way possible that he could have met a friend online? either at school or at his father's or at through at your house do you think that's possible in any way there's always a possibility that that is that is a question that i can out like there's always a possibility that a child can do something now from my best recollection mom's best recollection uh, and the father's best recollection, not that, we know. not that we know of. Um, our house, as we've stated, has been, it is strict. It stays locked down with that kind of situation. Um, we use internet time and gaming as like a positive reinforcement rather than a free access. Okay. Um, TBI is, uh, well, excuse me, let not just TBI, but all law enforcement agencies involved are actually anything and everything which way they can they are doing their best to investigate look search uh any little thing and right now we're just we got no luck okay um Sorry, that was my headphone. Katie, can you walk us through um, for it for anyone that's new to this case that may be just finding out about Sebastian being missing? Can you walk us through uh, what happened on Sunday, like the before Sebastian, you know, went missing? Can you walk everybody through that and what led up to you? finding out that Sebastian was missing. Yeah. 
um, Sunday morning, I'll just start at the morning. Sunday morning, we got up and I made um, a fun breakfast for us, uh, spaghetti pancakes. Google it, y'all. Um, we FaceTime family while we were eating so he could brag because that's something he likes to do. And um, we were laughing and joking on FaceTime and having a good time with that. Um, after breakfast, um, we got a call to go pick up um, our niece and um, go um, take her to meet up. So we, we did that. We went and picked her up and we met her mom at um, BJ's. And uh, we were there with um, family members. Um, we come home and put our groceries away. And then a little bit later, we went to the bowling alley, a local bowling alley here, and we played games. And then we, and this is just Bubba and I, and we went to dinner, just the two of us, and then come home. Um, he took the trash out because that's his chore. And uh, um, he come in and he was playing in his room at the time. You know, I, I told him, I said, hey, Bubba, it's time to go to bed. And he goes, okay, good night, Mama, I love you. And then he said good night to his puppies. And um, he went to bed. Okay, and walk me through what happened. You said that you were on a phone call, you were on the couch, and then you went to bed at midnight. Walk me through exactly what transpired during that time before you went to bed at midnight for you. So, well, as when he works out of town a lot, so um, it, we normally sit and talk every evening. And uh, I normally fall asleep on him. <laughs> um, and he'll, you know, he'll tell me, wake up, you know, you got to go to bed. And um, so, and that was right around midnight. Um, so I got up and I put the puppies up and I went to bed myself at midnight. And, um, you know, I went, I went to sleep, obviously. And then 6 a.m., I went to wake him up for school. And that's when I couldn't find him. And um, sorry, it's okay. It's okay. Take it. Do you notice how she, this time she's gone into more detail of what happened on a Sunday, how they met up with friends and everything. So why didn't she say that in the first interview? Well, on a Sunday we. We met up with such and such, and we went here. And then after that, we went bowling. She went bowling with him on a, on her own, just the mother and Sebastian. So why didn't she bring all that into the first interview? You know what I mean? It took them what one, two, one, two, three. So it's the fourth interview now. So the second live phone uh live interview they've done so yeah so why did she bring it all up then your time because sorry because that would be imprinted on your mind what happened that day on that sunday because you'd be thinking well, what was it that happened on the Sunday? We went there, we met up with this person, we went to this place, we did this, we had our evening meal, our lunch or dinner, whatever. We come home, so what happened? So I didn't notice, you know what I mean? Was there someone following us? You know what I mean? That would be imprinted on your brain. So why did you not bring that out in the first interview? Take your time. Tell me, did Sebastian take any type of medication before he went to bed or, or 
that would make him sleepy or did any, if he did take medication, it was just in the morning or did he take medication at night before he went to bed? He did take medication nightly okay. and daily. Um, okay. Okay. The, for HIPAA, for HIPAA reasons, we are, we will not disclose. I understand. What the is. I was just trying to think, you know, if there was something that might have made him sleepy, like if he would have woken up, you know, I've just all these different questions that people so, have asked. So, right. but you don't have to disclose any particular. We nobody needs to know that, you know, specifically. I just wanted to ask. Um, do you feel any particular way? Do you do you have any thoughts about? about Sebastian's disappearance. Do you feel that he may have walked off? I've seen a lot of people in chat saying that he went out the window versus he went out the door. How did the door get locked? Um, that you found the door locked. Um, can you walk me through exactly what that looks like and what you found was the door locked? What do you think may have occurred for him walking off versus well, I tell you this. with someone? Okay. We, did, we didn't find any signs of the windows, but um, I am without disclosing the details of my door locks. I will say I that Sebastian regularly and consistently went out and locked the door behind himself. Okay. Okay. All right, let me get over here because I have some other questions that are coming in. Um, now, I, I will say this much. Let, let them ask questions. I mean, we're not hiding anything. I've heard so much negativity that I refuse to answer questions. Let them fly. I mean, okay. I'll be respectful okay. of my responses. I would hope they would be respectful in their questions. Questions, but please let them fly. We're good with it. Okay. Um, I'm just going to uh, Crystal on the chat. Right now, they said he would go out regularly and shut the door behind him. But then later on, they said he never went out. He never went out to play or anything. He only went out to take the rubbish out. Or, to, or if he's out there cooking the lawn, cooking the lawn, pardon me, I've got a bit of hiccups there, right? And uh, so was it one of those doors that like, locked automatically on the way out? Or is it one where you have to use the key to lock it? Because I know in one place I lived, I had to remember to take my keys with me every time I walked out my door. Because if I didn't, then I was locked out. Because the door automatically locked as you went out. You couldn't just push the handle down to get back in. You need the key. So is that what their doors are like, where they where automatically locks? They don't go into that. So that, Still, they haven't answered any questions. Like, they didn't say whether he's got his own key. Nothing. I do. I'm gonna. Okay, go ahead. Um, we know that that Sebastian was high functioning. Uh, had a high functioning autism. Uh, what would you say was strengths and weaknesses that he had? Because no two kids are the same. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> that is, you, you You are nowhere far from the truth on that because that is so correct. Um, Sebastian is extremely high functioning. He's, his weakness, he does not have a sense of personal space. Um, they've always been working with him about like a three foot rule because he likes to be right up in your face. Hey! You know, whoa. He's, he deals with some social and emotional dysregulation issues. Mm -hmm. Simply put, he, he, his emotions or responses don't always appropriately match the situation. Um, and, and 
actually he can be somewhat awkward interacting with others because he doesn't always match like I don't know how to say it, right? Like, it, someone will want to talk about one conversation, but if that's not the subject he's fixating on, he will just railroad over that and go right back to what he's thinking. Um, but at the same time, he's also, for the most part, a pretty happy kid, and he loves being a helper, and he likes, you know, he likes animals, and he's really smart, um, he, he can play in a game of chess and he's beat grown men in chess. He actually likes reading occasionally, but only if it's what he wants to read. Um, so like Minecraft books, um, he loves to read those. Um, albeit his humor is a little different. He's funny. I, I prefer he's silly more than anything. How is he with strangers? Depends on the day, to be honest with you. He goes either he's never met a stranger all the way to, depending on his mood, he don't want nothing to do with anybody. So it's kind of difficult to answer that question because it varies depending on where he is in the moment. Okay. Normally, he he's he's. There's times he's not afraid to talk to people. There's times he is afraid to talk to people. Um, adults maybe not so much, but children he he has no problem approaching children and talking. Um, for the most part. For the most part, like I said, it, it it's it just depends on what mood and what day of the week you catch him. Okay, Artie, do you have a question you'd like to ask? I just wanted to know if maybe thinking back on it, is there anything you can think of that seemed off or out of the ordinary prior to him going missing that during the night before you noticed he was missing? I honestly didn't notice anything that was like, oh my God, that's weird. You know, I mean, we, we had a really good day, you know, he wasn't in trouble at all. We went to bed on a good note, and I I don't know if maybe he just wasn't saying something, but nothing, and I've gone over this so many times, I'm ill, but I didn't see or notice anything that was like red flag, you know? Okay. He didn't have any meltdowns or anything like that, that that seemed off. No, he was actually really well behaved that day. He was even killed for the most part all day. Now, he he on a subject, good point now, Arctic Fox. Did you have any like meltdown? Now, from what the father said, when he got to the house on that day, the house was immaculate, as usual. It's always clean, always spot. My house is tidy and clean, but it's not immaculate. It used to be, but I've just lost it. <laughs> I haven't got the energy to do like clean my house like I used to. And so it's clean, but it's not immaculate. Right? Christ, I used to back up three times, three or four times a day. I'll be cleaning windows. Every time a little smoke's got in my window, I'll be cleaning them. But I haven't got the energy no more. Anyway, but he said when he got there, the house was immaculate, except for Sebastian's room. Now, that tells me normally Sebastian's room is tidy. Because they said, except for Sebastian's room, or something like that. So it tells me, okay, the house is immaculate, except for Sebastian's room. Now, I know children with autism can have meltdowns. They can throw things. They can trash a room. Like no one's, and when they when when they're doing that, you just got to step back 
get back unless you can see themselves going to get hurt then you step in but otherwise you step back and and you just have to let them get, go for it because some like when my grandson he's been he's just being assessed now for it right well he's on a waiting list to be assessed for it but he has his meltdowns where he'll go in the bedroom or drop off in such so mad and angry that anything he comes across it goes flying literally it goes flying across the room right and when you get in the bedroom all the boxes and the toys will be just tipped out on the floor his bedding will be pulled off everything so i'm wondering did something happen on the sunday which i'm not telling us did he have his little mouth a mouth down where something happened and because of that some something else happened maybe he hurt himself got injured or because there was one dog that got his scent perhaps it did perhaps you don't know perhaps something happened right and the mother was talking to the stepfather on the night time right and he's gone i'll tell you what i'll give him a call and see what's happening perhaps the stepfather could have phoned him and said go a bit later right back after he spoke to the mother, right, and he's messaged him and said, look, do you want to talk? I'm outside. If you want to talk, come and talk to me. I'm outside. Let's talk about this. Right. And that's what happened. That's how they've got him out of the house. But I still can't see him going out of the house without shoes on. Right. Not in pitch blackness. It is pitch black around there. We've seen the video from that YouTuber yesterday where she went around the estate, but I also seen the one on the night time and it is pitch black. Right? They went earlier on in the evening and so there's still a lot of lights on from the houses. But you imagine, say, three o'clock in the morning, there's no living room lights on, there's no kitchen lights on. And a lot of the houses turn the outside lights off as well when they go to bed. Yeah, me personally, I'd rather keep my outside lights on all night and turn them off in the morning. Because as soon as you turn them outside lights off, it's telling people, oh, they're in bed. They've gone to bed. Me personally, I'd just leave mine on. I would leave mine on all night. But there'd be, a lot of them do turn the outside lights off. So there'd be hardly any lights on at three o'clock in the morning, which showed on that one minute, 20 second video, there was no lights on apart from certain home security lighting that would come on automatically when someone comes into that area or whatever. So it's... Uh, can I ask the question? Uh, sure. Was was that um, unusual for uh, him no. to be well behaved all day? Not necessarily. And Sebastian goes through phases. He's got streaks where he's great, and then it's like he goes through remission. Yeah, like he, he'll screw up and he'll <laughs> he'll get in trouble, and then he'll be good again. And he'll screw up. I, mean, he... I can believe that because that's just like my grandson. He does something, he gets into trouble. Then ten minutes later, he's all as though it never happened. It's literally, literally ten, fifteen minutes later, maybe half an hour later at the most, as though nothing's ever happened. And he's all, I love you, and all this stuff. Yeah, half an hour ago, he's, I hate you. You know what I mean? I don't want to see you. Bye. I'll just take you home then, shall I? No. 
you know what I mean? But that's how he can be. So I can see where they're coming from when they say that. He's, he's like a typical kid um, in a sense, but he just has autism. And, I mean, it... It's hit or miss. But, but, like, he'll be doing really, really great for a few weeks, and then all of a sudden it's like he'll slip a, sl flip a switch. Sorry. And, you know, and then we're, you know, we're working on, you know, going to the bathroom, and we're working on manners, and we're working on attitude, and then, you know, and then we'll go through that phase, and then we'll go through, you know, and he'll, he'll flip the switch again, and he's, you know, doing really great. He just goes through i understand that know, completely like, trust me <laughs> progress backpedal progress backpedal you know but it... now when i saw on social media um mm -hmm. some people were talking about um seth had, had spoken on um i guess it was um maybe it was the pascal show that he recently spoke on and he was talking about how um, at the end of the school year, Sebastian was supposed to come and live with him. Um, and can you t tell us anything about that? Was Is there anything specific to know about that? I think a lot of people have been, you know, have been saying some very interesting things um, according to some posts that I saw, um, apparently it's because, Chris, you are, um, that he's scared of you, <laughs> that he's scared of you and he's, and that you're bullying him at home. And I just, I, I hate, I don't, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't like how he laughed then when she said that, that he's scared of you, that you're bullying him. And then he laughs. <laughs> I don't like that. It's just like, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I don't like the fact he laughs. That's quite a serious, so you could say allegation that he's being bullied and all this lot. That's quite serious for people to say that. So for him to just laugh it off, if someone said to me, well, I understand that your grandson don't want to come to you because you're he's, he, you're bullying him. But like I agree, no way. I wouldn't be laughing. I'd be going, no way. I don't bully him. I don't, you know what I mean? But he laughs it off. And that really took my... I don't like to ask these questions, but I feel I like... Prefer, it seems I would to actually... Be address I this because I, I just want you to um, talk to us about why people are saying this and why people are also putting online that you have domestic violence charges and I just wanted you to talk to us about that if you whatever you feel like you can tell us um, so we can try to um, reel that in. <laughs> No, no, it's, I'm okay to address every bit of this. Okay. So, you mentioned Sebastian's afraid of me. Right. Now, it was round about this time, right, that certain messages wasn't, was being deleted. If not before. If not before. So, we couldn't understand why they was deleting the messages. And someone said, well, we don't accept any other YouTuber's name to be mentioned. But this one message that was deleted didn't mention any YouTuber's name. It was replying to another YouTuber that was in chat. Right? He was replying to another YouTuber in chat. And uh, then there's this one woman who was there. None of her messages were getting through because they kept deleting all her messages. And that's what got me. This is what annoyed me about this live. Right? Duchess, Duchess does a, is brilliant. I love her. Arctic Fox, 
brilliant. I'm not, I don't know about Crystal. I haven't seen any of her page, her page or anything. But I will do. I'll go and have a look. So I can't really say whether I like her or I don't like her. You know what I mean? I probably will like her. Right? And so we've got three good YouTubers up there. But there was delete, her mod was deleting messages uh, with questions for Chris. Right? And this one member in the chat was getting quite angry about it. And everyone ever said notice that her her comments have been deleted. And I felt really bad for her. So like certain questions, if I think if there's too hard for if there's like a hard question, they were they're just deleted. Nah, we're not having that one go through. Nah. Or if you mentioned any other YouTuber, like Obviously, this one, they're both YouTubers in the chat. And one YouTuber was replying to the other YouTuber about some comments he made. Right? So he's replying to that YouTuber. And they delete his message, his comments. I'm thinking, why? Why did you delete his message? So I, I did think the mug were a bit too over anxious. Well, that is a loaded question because somebody who has released some information out there from another show who um, I won't put his name out there. I will. I will. I've already put his name out there. Why? Because you, Chris, was not getting back to him. Why? Now, everyone's got their views on YouTubers. Right? And I don't care who you like, who you don't like, who you watch, who you don't like, watch. I don't care. Right? You may not like Duchess, but I love her. Arctic Fox, brilliant. As I said about Christy, I don't know because I'm not seeing any of their videos. But there might be someone in chat who don't like one of these. I don't care. You know what I mean? So, but for him, Chris, to sit there and be like he has really got my back up. And one, and one of the um, people in the chat actually commented, kept commenting. So. Uh, allowed somebody to say something. Now, mind you, you and you have a teenage child or teenage children. All parents know this. Your children are not going to like you because you're not there to be their best friend. You're there to be a parent. Oh, I know what YouTuber is on about here. I know which one. It's the YouTuber where the I believe it was the grandmother of Sebastian went on and put some comments up on her chat about Chris Pratt. And as parents, you have rules they have to follow. If they don't, there's consequences. Um, Sebastian will say, one day he's upset and mad at me for something, and 20 minutes later will run up to me, throw his arms around me, cry and say i'm sorry and i love you so you know when when you get in trouble of course you don't like your parents you know he said the exact same things about his father but that's when you set him down and said look bud parents are parents and we're gonna have to do what we have to do and unfortunately, you're not going to like it, but down the road, when you get older and if you decide to have children, some, someday you're going to look back and say, man, they were right. Yeah, but there's ways of, you can't, look, you can say to a child without any learning disability, you can't do that, you, you know what I mean? You have to do it. 
right? Now they can either take your advice or they don't. I know I can go into you nine times out of ten. They're not going to take your advice. And then something will happen. And you're sitting there as a parent and say, well, I did tell you. I did tell you. You know what I mean? And that's when they realise, oh, I should have listened to mum. Or I should have listened to dad. When something goes wrong. Right? But with child with special education needs, like autism or anything else like that, you can't teach them like you would any other child. Because that child will still make that mistake. He'll make it. And you'll say, well, I did tell you, but he'll go and do it again in two weeks' time. And again. Right? So there's what you can't teach them like you can a child without special education needs. You have to teach them differently. Like at the moment, I'm trying to, I just keep reinforcing with my grandson, like, not to just walk up to people. You can't just walk up to people and start talking to them because he has this nasty habit of doing that. And I don't know how many times I've told him, you can't do that, sweetheart. And he'll do it time and time and time again. So you just got to keep reinforcing him. You can't shout at him. You can't scream at him, whatever, put them in punishment. You have to keep explaining to him. It's tiring. It's annoying as a parent or grandparent. But that's the only thing you can keep doing is keep reinforcing that you can't do that. You know what I mean? It's not something they will learn not to do. Right? So, and it's like, when he, he hits his, like, his sister's now getting in trouble a bit because she's hitting out at him. And she's getting in trouble now because before it was always Ellis getting in trouble. And I said, hold on. Look at her, she's the one doing it. But you're only seeing Ellis retaliate. Right? She's going up to him and going, get away from me and pushing him. And things like that. Yes, he does hit her, but she hits him back as well. So I'm not going to say, oh, I don't. I will say, look, you can't hit your brother and you can't hit your sister. Right? And then if she stops hitting him and he keeps hitting her, then he's the one going to get in trouble. But not in trouble like, well, you're grounded or you can't do this, you can't have that. It's like, Ellis, you can't do that. She's not hitting you no more, so you can't hit her no more. Sort of thing. You've got to keep reinforcing it with them. You can't just, like, she's learning. She's only three. She's learning not to hit back. But she will. Because she's had, like, Two, two to three years of him hitting her and pushing her. She's now at that age. I'm not having this no more. And she's hitting back. Which I can understand her that as well. But now we've just got to teach her, look, you can't hit him. You can't do that. But then with him, she'll learn quicker than he will. She'll learn a lot quicker than he will. Because if she does it at home, then she's going to do it at nursery or school. Now, at school, because of the classes in, they understand that they will take good days, they'll have bad days. They take one day at a time, right? And they don't get all stressed out over his behaviour because the kids in his class are all the same. They all have the same sort of behaviour in one way or another. So it's just a reinforcement with them all the time. Anyway, let's carry on. So, I mean, people have their opinions. They have their their thoughts and their assumptions, and that's fine. I have never once stopped a person from having them. That's why we are people. That's how we are. But knowing the facts are one thing. And then assumptions behind what you want to put out there is something totally different. 
Right. You know, you addressed domestic violence. Okay. There are some folks out there who have decided to go online and go pull some public records, which perfectly okay with. What would I to do? Domestic violence. If I had domestic violence in my background, I wouldn't have certain credentials that I have because you're not legally allowed to. What credentials? Um, domestic violence? No. I've had a temporary protective order and I had a no contact order placed against me in New Mexico with my ex-wife. Now, mind you, let me back up and I'll play the whole story for you. Me and my ex-wife, we actually lived here in Tennessee for a little bit. We had a daughter. And at the time, my daughter was only maybe six weeks old. An event took place while I was holding my daughter. And when that took place, I filed for an immediate protection order against her. We went to court. The court made their decisions. I gave my daughter back to her mother. And when she received her, she jumped in a truck and flew right back to New Mexico. Got to New Mexico within two days of being there. She turned around and filed the exact same thing against me in New Mexico. Mm. So everything that people are reading, it's on a court document. But what you don't read is the... Um, all the things that are happening in the court. You're not reading the transcript. So unfortunately you don't know the full story, but right. if people want to ask, I'm okay to tell you, you know, um, yes, I still have a current custody case going on in New Mexico that actually has absolutely zero. Which has absolutely everything to do with Sebastian. Sex sake. It has nothing to do with this case he's going to say. It does. Because when you bring another child into your home where where you've got a child with, with autism, right? How you gotta look at how that child is gonna to react to that ever to Sebastian. Or how Sebastian will react to that child. So it does come into focus with Sebastian. You've got to take all that into consideration. Right? It's bad enough when you have a child with autism and then you have another child of your own together without autism. That's like my son and his wife with their boy. They had their life first. It's just now being assessed for autism or ADHD, whatever you call it. And then they had the daughter three years later. So, and it's like, he doesn't understand the fact that he was always number one for three years. He was always number one. He's the only child in that house. And then all of a sudden he's got to readapt himself to having someone else in the house. So, yes, it does have a lot to do with him, I think. And he says it doesn't, but you listen to this, he'll say something different later. Bearing on this case with Sebastian, um, I do ask people to refrain from bringing that up because it has no bearing. And all you're going to do is put assumptions and you're going to allow people to have... Uh, there's speculations and, and bring out more false information. And it. what people don't understand is every time somebody puts something out there or they call into the law enforcement agency and says, the stepfather did it, you need to check the stepfather. Well, now you've just pulled a body away from the investigation because they are mandated to deal with that. Right. And I have told everybody from the very beginning the TBI put a news link out and in there it does state that all three parents have extremely been cooperative and constantly or continuously working with law enforcement 
and they have there's absolutely nothing to show that we are responsible foul play any of that nature people no it doesn't it says you're being cooperative yes but it didn't say there's been no foul play by you or your wife it just says they can't see any signs of foul play but then they might then it goes on to say um hold on i'll pull it up so i can read it hold on uh where is it did you see that yeah I will read what it says again. Right. Right. It says, so, uh, blah, 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 but the ocean. Right. We have not forgotten about Sebastian. Much of the work currently being done to bring Sebastian home may not necessarily be public or visible. But agents, detectives and intelligence analysts continue to work around the clock to view every bit of information available. Sebastian's family has remained cooperative since the search began and have done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. Right? At this stage in the investigation, there are few clues to indicate what happened to Sebastian or where he may be. There is no not proof at this time that there is any criminal element involved in his disappearance, but also there is not any proof that there is not a criminal element involved. I'll read that bit again. There is not proof at this time that there is any criminal element, element involved in his disappearance, but also there is not any proof that there is not a criminal element involved. Right, so we go back to this. It didn't clear you. Well, asked about interrogations and polygraphs. All this stuff has been done. All of it has yeah, been done. That was one of the questions that I had up next was, have you both taken a polygraph test? The results are passed. Chris, can I ask something? Because I know that yes, people was going to ask it afterwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, he laughed again. Why? This is serious. Come on. I know you've been asked the same question for two weeks. Well, for two weeks, because the first week you didn't say nothing. Then the second week you did. So for two weeks now, you're probably being asked the same question. But I would not be laughing. I would be mortified. The event that happened, was that toward you or by you? It was toward me. Okay. So, so to give you, a, I'll go ahead and paint that story very crystal clear. Um, I was holding my daughter in my left arm. Okay, mind you, she was a little baby. She was up against my chest, cuddled up next to my cheek and my shoulder. Um, my ex-wife accused me of having an affair with a co-worker um, who was not much into men. I'll let you go that direction wherever you want to go. Just wasn't into men. Um, and that co-worker was my boss at the time. And she didn't like, and I was like, you're kidding me, right? And I showed it to her. She And she's she's very hot-headed. She didn't like the answer. Swore up and down I was. And she connected and slapped me across the left-hand side of my face where I was holding my daughter. If you can do that while a man is holding a child, or a woman is holding a child for that matter, if you can slap that person while they're holding that child, that says something about you. Yeah, and I don't have I'm not going to be in that situation I wouldn't expect any person to be in a situation of that so I had to do what I had to do based on being a parent which was best for my child right I just knew that in the future that people would be online saying there was an incident and nobody asked what the incident was um 
you and said I'm sure, the results. I'm, I'm sure they're the gonna results spin are, it. Yeah. The results of the polygraph was that you passed. Is that both of you passed or can you say? Uh yes. Okay. I think that was the my that was my question that was up next was um so you've both taken a polygraph test. That was um some of the questions I see a couple people asking that specifically, did you take a polygraph test specifically? Chloe um and Mo wanted to know specifically, could you elaborate? Did you take one and also pass? I've got a question and a lot of people have been asking. Chris, is there any reason why you don't want Sebastian around your daughter? So uh, I'm going to make this real crisp. Cr Thank you, Arctic Fox. Thank you for asking that question. Okay. Um, I just got a message to come through. Hold on. I just got to read something. Oh my god. Oh god. Crystal clear for everybody. There's some things that can be just can be spoke of and there's some things that will not be spoke of and personal issues inside my family are strictly that they have nothing no bearing on this investigation um the cops are well aware of everything mm -hmm. involving specifics and that's quite honestly i know this is going to sound snarky and rude but it's really nobody's business as to that because it has no bearing on this case understood okay um and for the record, I will say this, all three parents have an agreement and we all understand this. That can be Got said. It. Got it. Okay. And someone wanted to ask, Angela said, I would like for Chris to clarify what he meant when he said he hasn't seen Sebastian since early February. Are you able to clarify? And if you're not, just state that. So I cannot give certain details with this investigation, and that's kind of one of those things. Okay. Um, I why? Why can't he tell us whether he's at home or at work during those weeks? Why? I don't understand that. I'm just seeing it, MG. Yeah. But it says, oh, done, everyone. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll go and I'll find it again. It says the blanket was found earlier in this investigation. Well, it's been like a month now. So why wasn't this released sooner? So, I don't understand why that wasn't released sooner. Uh, yeah, I, when I look on it, like there's some people, they put on a headline, their, their title. Like this morning, I'm not joking. I'm not going to say who it was, but let's go. It's about another case of another lad gone missing. He's 20, I'm not sure how old he is, but is that uni or something like that? So it's got to be 18. No, it's got to be 21 because the drinking age is 21, isn't it, in the, in, in the USA? And he's gone missing. And, but then, 
Look out this morning and I see him on my TV on YouTube. Body found in river. Or oh, citizen's body in river. I'm like, oh my God, no. And it wasn't him. I creeped on it. And it wasn't even about that lad. It was another body that was found. And I hate that because that is, to, in my opinion, it's clickbait because he's probably got loads of clicks. Bump, 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 bump. And that annoys me because you get on there and think, oh, God, it wasn't his body. So what was the title about then? Why did, some people have put up a, a post and they've gone, body found in river, not such and such. Right? So you think, okay, fine. Don't mind that. But when you have that title, I think that's just, oh, just annoyed me so much that did. Oh, is that why it took him so long to release that? But I would have checked anyway before going to bed because normally I'll check before going to bed for a little for the two rivers police. I do check in the mornings and I'll check again. Normally before I go to bed. If not before I go to bed, I'll do check in the mornings. So if anything comes out, it normally comes out once I've gone to bed. Anyway, let's just skip on a little bit because oh god. Yeah. What I will say on that is this. People go through divorces and is is it is not the best of times. So I was not pervy to that kind of information prior to my relationship with my wife. That was that if anything happened that happened prior to my knowledge. So I cannot and give you an answer of that, but what I can say is if it is out there, it could be a public knowledge. It could be a public record, but I don't have any knowledge of it. Okay. That's what I needed to ask on that one. Okay. Going back over here to my questions, guys, please. Oh, I appreciate your patience and they are sending me the questions. I got, and I'm not afraid to show them. I'm not afraid to screenshot them and let the public see it. Now, I will say, unfortunately, none of this. But you don't know, Chris. You don't. There's a thing on the, what we call a YouTube strip where they ask for receipts. By that, they mean copies of the information that you've got. Right? And if you can't show us then the copies, then you're not going to be believed. He's not showing anything. He doesn't have to. Okay, I understand. He doesn't have to. But don't come on a live chat and say, I've got these receipts, I've got these messages, I've got this, I've got that. Without showing us something, Right, because people are, like me are going to want to see some proof. Simple as this has to do with the investigation of our son. But as we had a heated discussion, yes, I sent her an apology for the heated discussion. And I've never received anything back from the grandmother, which I have always left that door open. In fact, the day when they got into town, I invited them to my house and welcomed them in. They stayed for a couple hours, then they left. I helped them guide them to the direction where they were putting their RV. And have always made it abundantly clear that regardless, people are going to have their disputes. Doors always open. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, Cluminati, yes, asked this 
several times in chat, so I want to go ahead and address that. Where can locals be looking for Sebastian? Um, Cluminati is local to your area, and um, she would like to know where you would like for people to be looking for Sebastian so they can be looking there. Is there any areas that you and Katie want to have people that are out there searching uh, where you want them to be hanging flyers? What can you tell us about that? Everywhere. Mm -hmm. I got it. I mean, everywhere. I mean, I it, for me to give you a designated area would suspect that we think he's in, in an area. Well, we don't know. So <laughs> anywhere and everywhere, people be very vigilant. Please be vigilant. You'd be surprised at how complacent we as society get when we're not focused on things. We're so driven on our day-to-day -day functions that we forget about things that are going on around us. We're right. all guilty, myself included. You know, anywhere and everywhere you can look. If there's if there's not a flyer and you can print one off and post it up where you don't see a flyer, please do. We, I'm speaking for all three parents and the, all the families. We would greatly appreciate that. We send prayers, our thoughts, and our love out to everyone. I promise you. If there was a way we could make it felt and we could show it, we would. Um, but for the most part, I mean, that may be about it. And then he goes right back to his bedroom. Okay. Uh, Bobby James asks, can Chris comment on why you are threatening lawyers about the bio dad's GoFundMe? So the conversation of that is not threatening. Listen to this. This is what really got my buckle today. Hold on. Let's talk it again. That means the bio father with attorneys. That conversation that flew out between me, the father was in the house, his sister was on the phone. We asked them to take that down. And that goes back to one of the questions as far as one of the things we all agreed not to do mm -hmm. because even with law enforcement it says it could betray a bad look so we all agreed not to do it she did it anyways and then we asked her politely to take it down first time she got nasty with us on the phone and then i retaliated and i told her i said if this causes harm to our son you can bet i will call an attorney okay yeah please I put up the link earlier. It is again, right? What harm is there in that? His father can't, is not working at the moment. His father is a chief deputy um, sheriff. Right? He's had to take time out of his work. He wouldn't be able to concentrate at work because of his own son. You know what I mean? So he's took time out of his work to so he can be boots on the ground, out there, looking, putting posters out, asking people, talking to people, anything. Now, this is just to help him pay his bills, right? It's not for him to buy meals or drinks or anything like that while he's out there every day. It's to help pay his house, his bills for home. That is it. So, what am I doing? Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with me. Hold on, something's happened. What am I doing? Go back. And let's continue to. Uh, where was I? Afford to play. He prefers to play inside. Play per Earlier, he had his reason, and they all agreed it was best that Sebastian not be around his dog. Right. Uh, Between the two, is he lives here? So, and we have. A 
I'm just trying to find the right Marty, Do you have a question before I read Vic? We send prayers, our thoughts, and our love out to everyone. About living with his biological dad. <laughs> well, that depends on what day you ask him, to be honest with you. There's days he was and days he wasn't. Um, I mean, like I said, when a kid gets in trouble, I don't want, you know, I don't like you. Well, I'm sorry. You know, and then an hour later, he, like nothing happened. So, it, like I said, it, it, it's up or down. I can, I, I'm with him on there. I'm with him. You know what I mean? They don't like, you tell them they can't do this or they can't do that or they shouldn't do this or they shouldn't do that. They go up, I hate you. My grandson said it all the time to me. You know what I say to my grandson when he says that? If he says, I hate you, I go, I call him by his name. He'll go, yeah. I'll go, but I love you. And with that, it stops him from going up in such a drop. He'll walk away, but he's not going up in such a drop where he's knocking things off the table or the trash in his bedroom. It, it, that one little sentence has calmed him down by saying his name, and then he's going, what? And I say, I love you. It calmed him down. Okay. And I'm seeing this in chat, so I'm just going to go ahead and ask, is, is there a particular reason that you laugh before you answer a question? I've got my thoughts on it, but I think it would be better if you just took it. Um, that's fine. There are some questions that when people ask, I have heard these questions so many times. Um, as much as people are, are on social media and they read the responses, I still get the same questions. So... It's tiresome, but you know what? I told everybody I would answer the questions. So, yeah, in a way, it's kind of funny that I keep getting the same questions over and over and over. But like I've told everybody, I, I respect them. I will answer them. Okay. But trust me, by any means, is this fun? No. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy at all. Marty, do you have a question before I read Vet Girl's next question? I think he's muted. <laughs> okay. Um, go Bulldogs. Katie is, a, is there with Chris, but if she wants to speak, she will speak. But yes, she you. is. Um, Vet Girl, I, do RW, about oh, I think we have a delay, Crystal. Sorry. Because <laughs> it's okay. I think we do. Let um, me ask this question real how quick. How many viewers did Sebastian have? Say it one more time. How many pairs of shoes did Sebastian have? Oh, uh, well. I'm not going to see how many shoes he has, but I will say that all of the shoes he has are accounted for. Did y'all did y'all catch mom? Okay. So she's not gonna tell us how many shoes he has. Okay, that's her choice. But why not? You know what I mean? Prime mother, I okay, he had look, he has three pairs, he, but he likes this one particular pair. Because children with autism are very funny about the shoes. Right, when my son got married and he was having his son and his nephew, who's on the spectrum of autism, he was going to have him wear a kilt with the shoes. But then they decided not to go down that road, right? Because children with autism are very funny about what they wear and and the shoes they wear. Now my nephew, my grandson, I mean, my my eldest grandson, is on the spectrum. His mum brought him a lovely pair of shoes. Would he wear them? No. Wouldn't wear them. 
So I don't know why she can't, won't she? So look, he has three pairs of shoes. And I didn't it broke quite up hear. a little bit for me, did you? Yeah. Okay. She said that she would not divulge how many pairs of shoes he has, but law enforcement and has accounted for every pair of shoes. I have accounted for all of his shoes. Okay. Um can Vet Girl says, can you ask what Sebastian's normal school night routine is? Like some kids like to have their shower or a favorite blanket, their favorite pajamas. Please and thanks. Sure. Sebastian comes home, gets off the school bus, comes in the house, um, does his chores, completes his homework, um, eats dinner. Uh, that time kind of varies. I don't have a set time on that. Bedtime, we normally have it right around 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Sebastian gets a shower most of the time before he goes to bed, um, around 7 o'clock-ish. Mm -hmm. um, but then, like I said, he's he's in the bed by 9 o'clock. And Sebastian didn't have anyone that lived in the area that he hung out with at all that lives near you. How would he know the routine when he works away a lot? Hmm. No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Alicia P., for that question. And then Alan Tank says, um, what's Sebastian like with people outside the family that he doesn't know? Is he shy with strangers? Is he outgoing? So uh, that, that question you asked earlier in the podcast, it depends. It Each day it kind of varies. Um, he can be shy. He can be talkative uh, with most kids. He don't hold back when it comes to kids. He is like, you know, he's but he's got a up close and in your face kind of thing that he's got to work on. So it kind of makes it difficult uh, with adults. It depends. Uh, there are some days he doesn't even want to talk to family members. And some days he may. Um, it just kind of depends. Okay, and hang on one second. I'm just getting to the next one. Artic, did you or Crystal have a question that you wanted to ask? No, I just, I, I pr really want to make sure that the audience has a chance to get all their questions in. Yeah, I'm going through each one of them right now. Um, some of them have already been asked. She's literally, she's going through the questions, and yet, okay, a lot of the questions may have already been asked. But she's picking and choosing what questions to ask. You know what I mean? So I'm not asking those. Um, let's see. Uh, Alan Tank says, does Katie look in on him if she gets up to use the bathroom or anything in the night usually? Not normally. I've never really had a whole reason to. I mean, now that he's older, at least. Um, he gets up in the middle of the night and he comes in and gets snacks and, you know, and uh, the dogs don't even bark at him because he shushes them and they know him. But um, no, I've never since he's gotten older, I don't really have a reason to like peek in on him and wake him up. And does he get up and down normally throughout the night on a regular basis? True Crime Cafe with Dago ask. Um, it honestly, he gets up and down at different times, different nights. I mean, not always. Um, I mean, he goes in the kitchen and he'll sneak snacks and sweets and things he knows he's not supposed to be having, like typical kids do. Um. But for the most part, I mean, that may be about it. And then he goes right back to his bedroom. Okay. Uh, Bobby. G well, when my grandson stays, nine times out of ten, he'll end up in my bed. Always does. I'm asking, why don't you sleep in your own bed all night? Because yours is cozier. 
means my bed is bigger so he can push me out. Right? He thinks he can sneak out of the bedroom without me knowing how wrong he is. But I must admit, he doesn't normally get up during the night. He doesn't. But he does get up in the morning. And sometimes I've gone, where are you going? He's just going in the living room to watch my tablet. Because he knows when his sister's here, he has to be quiet with his tablet. He can't have it on full volume. So he likes to go in the living room. And I can guarantee you, if I've left any biscuits out, right, any biscuits, he'll, he'll eat them. And I go, did you eat my biscuits? No. I go, but the crumbs are all over my floor. So yes, they do sneak into the kitchen and they get the things they can grab hold of, like biscuits or crisps. But I don't shout at him, I don't tell him off. But I bet you Chris would. I bet you Chris would say, you've been in the kitchen again, haven't you? You've had these sweets again, haven't you? James asks, can Chris comment on why you are threatening lawyers about the bio dad's GoFundMe? So the conversation of that is not threatening the bio father with attorneys. That conversation that flew out between me, the father was in the house, his sister was on the phone. We asked them to take that down. That goes back to one of the questions as far as one of the things we all agreed not to do. Mm -hmm. Because even with law enforcement, it says it could portray a bad look. So we all agreed not to do it. She did it anyways. And then we asked her politely to take it down first time. She got nasty with us on the phone. And then I retaliated and I told her, I said, if this causes harm to our son, you can bet I will call an attorney. But like I said, how is it going to cause harm to the investigation, to your stepson? How? It's helping the father stay out there, boots on the ground, looking for his son. It's not helping for anything else. Okay. Thank you for clarifying uh, that. Let's see. Um, was Sebastian playing with one of his devices online um, or on his switch before he went to bed? Annabelle Roma asked. None of his devices are connected to online. Okay. All right. No, because you've isolated him from any socialization. The only socialization is when he goes out with his mother and he meets up with a family friend, right? For an hour or so. And that's it. He doesn't have any after school activities. He doesn't have any acti activities out the house, apart from mowing the lawn maybe during the summer or taking the trash out. That's it. He doesn't play up and down the street on his bikes. Nothing. Thank you. Daisy was happy. Daisy's not. Um, one of the things I can, I'll, I'll tell you right now that he doesn't like, his dad's a smoker. You know, he doesn't like that his dad smokes. Oh, you have to get that in there, don't you, Chris? You have to get that in there. His dad's a smoker. That's a dig at the father. So, I mean, that's, he's like, no, I don't want to go because my dad smokes. But after you talk with him, you know, that's not a valid reason not to be moving in with his father. From what his father said, this is something they have been working on wanting to do for a few years now. It's not just an overnight thing. It's something they've been wanting to do for two, two, three years, maybe. 
Uh, someone asked Happy Hemp Creations, how do you redirect any meltdowns that he has? Depends on who he's with. Um, every parent handles him very much differently. Um, Sometimes you can just give him a, a pressure hug with light squeezing and talk to him calmly and calm him down. Mm -hmm. And other times you can send him, tell him to go to his room because that's his space and tell him to take five. I mean, there's times where me and him go outside and we'll have a discussion. Like, tell me what's on your mind, dude. I give you free reign. Talk to me. Let it out. I don't care what it is. Just say it. If See, sometimes we go outside and we have a discussion. Let it out. How do we know he didn't message you on the night time? You know what I mean? Because by the sounds of what his father said, his bedroom was a mess. Right? And I'll play that interview again, but not on this slide because we are now getting into like two hours or so. If that's what helps you, say it. Because he doesn't want to say a curse in front of Mama. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> that is one <laughs> thing he's been good about. He's like, look. Don't ever do it in front of your mama. That's all I'm asking. But if you and I go out somewhere and you want to do it, I'll give you the, right. no no consequences. I'll give you some time to do your thing. And he does it. He'll cry. He'll get all of his 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 thoughts and his feelings out. And he'll cry. And then he'll give me a big old hug and say, I'm sorry. And I love you. We hug it out. I'm like, it's all right, buddy. Trust me. Everybody's got to have an outlet. Where we tell him, like, if you need to yell and scream or be angry, just say, I need a minute to do that. And then, you know, whatever you say during that time frame, you don't get in trouble for it. And if you got a curse, you got a curse, but only when you're doing the free time. That way it sets a limitation so that he's not just, you know, free balling all the time with curse words. When, uh, when he's with his father that I know of, that we've all discussed, um, they'll go fishing. They like to do a lot of fishing and, uh, that's where he has his moments with his dad and they have their discussions. So, I mean, it, like I said, it, it varies with each parent. Okay. Um, David Bryant sent a super chat and he has a question and I'm not sure why this even applies, but I'm going to ask it. Um, David Bryant says, CP said, let questions fly. So, Katie, did you have an active dating profile at the time Sebastian went missing? Any oh, we'll go past that. That's not worthy. She didn't have one. Billboard company, and sometimes they will provide free billboards for children that are missing, too, if you reach out to them. Thank you. That's Thank you. We'll definitely get that looked into. And I did send you that link, Katie, but I will send it again to you after the live stream to make sure that you have it. Um, Individually, when, uh, what do you all think should happen is to the person if somebody abducted Sebastian? That is not for us to determine. That is, if somebody has Sebastian, all I'm going to say is that that is that is nothing that we want to be a part of until... That is legal. That is law enforcement agency. That has nothing to do with us. We just. They go to jail, so I don't. Mom's <laughs> saying they. She better hope they go to jail. <laughs> well, I, I will. What I think should happen. I think that their ass needs to be passed around the jail like a goddamn honey bun. Well, I, I mean, I trust me. I I have my own personal opinions, but. All I have to say is they better pray they go to jail before I get my hands on them. If I find out someone's hurt my baby. All I'm going to say is... Right. That's the end, really. I'm just chit-chatting there. What was that? How many shoes have... Well, actually, I've got... I've got more... I wear, like, uh, these boot things, these like a uh, biker boots sort of thing. I've got three pairs of them. And the other sort of shoe I wear are trainers. And I've got loads of trainers. I have got some, a sandal, a, sand, a wedge shoe, which I don't wear very often. 
And then I bought a pair of shoes for my son's wedding, which I hardly had on during the day because they was hurting my feet. And I, so I've not worn them since the wedding. So they're brand new, hardly worn, and they're sitting in my bottom of my of a unit that I've got, right? They're not being worn. So I've got one, two, three. There's five pairs of trainers, five, six pairs of trainers, and three pairs of these biker boots. I love my biker boots. But if it was my son when he was younger, I'd know exactly how many shoes he had. And I'd have no problem saying how many shoes he had. But she didn't want to tell us that. She just knows that you are, none of his shoes are missing. Well, what about slippers? You can wear slippers around the house. You know what I mean? Do you think, oh, I'm just popping out for a few minutes, so I'll just pop my slippers on? Because he obviously went out of that house. He walked out of that house. Now we know that. He obviously walked out of that house because of the scent from the dogs. Or dog, I should say. But otherwise, is um, we don't know what shoes he had on. I can't see him going out without a pair of shoes on. Not after that incident he had as a, a younger child. I really can't. Especially in the dark, because you don't know what you're going to walk in, do you? It's a common area. People could have took the dogs around there. You don't know if you're going to take in some poop. Christ's sake, you don't know. So there's no way I can see a child walking out of the house without shoes on, especially Sebastian. But um, that was, I did skip through quite a bit of it, right? But it's mainly because the questions was questions that we've all heard before. And I'm, I was just interested in the first bit when she was talking about what they did on the Sunday, about how he had face time in the morning with family members because he likes to do that while he's having his breakfast. And then they went out, they met up with a friend and their child. They went out somewhere with them. Then the mother and Sebastian went bowling and then they went out for the evening meal or their lunch, whatever. Right? I'd say that evening meal. Right? Then they've come home. He's gone up to his room. He's playing up in his room. Then she said, right, time for you to go to bed. He goes to bed at nine without, you know, arguing or huffing and puffing. And then half nine, stepfather phones. They have a two and a half hour chat. Right. Now I don't know why they have a two and a half hour chat because she's not seen him all week. Right? So she's probably filling in him, filling him in and what's happening in the gas. But I seriously think he had a meltdown because of what the father said, just how the father said it. How the father said normally the house was pristine except for his bedroom. Now he could have said, you know, if that had been me, I'd be gone. Yeah, the house was Christine, but his bedroom was a mess, but that's usual. That's just Sebastian, you know what I mean? His bedrooms are always a mess. Then again, any teenager's bedroom, if it wasn't for the parents, I think it would be like a dumping ground of teenagers, especially boys. Right, i tell you a story once. This is my son. Right, we planned a holiday. But we didn't want to tell my son. It was a surprise. We and my friends had gone on that way. We was only going down to uh Butlins. Right? Just for I think it was a week or something like that. Monday to the Friday, something like that. And we'd arranged it with the school. And we told them not to say anything to Simon because it was a surprise. We didn't tell Julie and her family, because those are the ones going down in the first place, because she had told Adam, who was Simon's friend, right? So we didn't tell them. 
The only people who knew was me, the dad, and his sister. Right? And this is how I, I know my son never put his washing away. Every Sunday, I'd stand there and iron all the clothing, put them into poles, put them in the bedrooms, right? My daughter would put her washing away, but my son just left it on this unit that was in his bedroom. I was able to go in that bedroom on the Sunday, pick up all his clothing that he needed off that pile, right? Put it in a case. And he didn't even notice that washing had been moved. We managed to get the cases in the boot of the car without him knowing. We got a change of clothes in his school bag, right? And what my daughter did, she put her change of clothes on underneath her school uniform, right? So she's got her, like, her leggings and a T-shirt or whatever she was wearing. And then she put her school trousers on top of her leggings and a shirt and a sweatshirt and everything. And he didn't even notice I took washing out of his room. And how old would he been then? I think he's been about 13, 14, if that. So if the father, the father could have said, yes, I went to the house, the house was immaculate as always. Uh, Sebastian's bedroom was a mess, but that's Sebastian. His room is always a mess, but he didn't. He said, I went to the house, the house was immaculate, except for Sebastian's bedroom. That's what makes me believe he had some sort of a meltdown. Something happened on a Sunday. He's had a meltdown, right? And something happened. Now, if it was an accident and they tried to uh, I don't know, perhaps um, remove his body, but they couldn't, they couldn't have removed his body because they couldn't, have, they couldn't have been an accident in the house because of the scent the dog picked up, right? Which stopped at the entrance to the construction site. Now, I think the entrance it stopped at was the entrance that was shown on that video yesterday, which is at the top of the, on one of the roads that goes past their road. You have to go up this road, one road partially, and then turn on to it. But if you carry on straight up that road at the top, it's a cul-de-sac again. But just as you're turning into that cul-de-sac, there's an entrance to the construction site. And the police said the dog lost the scent at the curb. The curb of the road, the end of the road, and then dirt. So that's where I think the dog lost the scent. So did someone, did he, I don't know if he spoke to someone, it would be on his phone. Because the police can pull up all things off your phone. So even if you delete anything, they can find it. Right? So it would have been found on the phone. But then again, they're not saying nothing. They're just saying they haven't left nothing on their phones. But they did tell us that there was no scent from any of the dogs. None of the dogs picked up on a scent. But then we find out one dog did. They did say they had no video camera, video of anything. But then we find out they did. So for all we know, there might be some on these phones which has been deleted. But they're not saying. Right? Because I can't see Sebastian going off and leaving home without taking his phone, without taking a jacket or some sweatshirt with him, without wearing a pair of shoes. It's dark. It's cold. So you're going to put shoes on. You're going to put a jacket on. Even if it's just for a few minutes, you're going to put a jacket on, some sort of jacket or sweatshirt on. To go outside, you've got a spotlight, uh, uh, a spot, uh, a torch, right? So you can see where you're going. But he had no shoes and he had no jacket, just a flimsy little top and some pyjama bottom sort of thing. You know, 
and I can't see him just going out there for that reason, leaving the house for that reason. It, there had to be some reason he left that house. And I think something happened on the Sunday. Where is that a meltdown? And I don't know, it could be something on his phone. Perhaps there was something on his phone where someone messaged him. Right? But like I said, you know, if I was a mother, I'd be thinking, did anyone follow me home someday? Did anyone see us together out there? Was we being followed by anyone? There's two SOs, two SOs in that area. One in off the road, one on the road by him. Right? And one over in the woods, the other side of where he lives. Showed it you yesterday. So there's two SOs. So how do we know they were roaming that area and they're seeing him getting out of the car or they're seeing him in the car? Or they're seeing him taking the rubbish out on the Sunday? Because don't forget, Monday morning, the bins were all empty. So he'd be taking the rubbish out Sunday night. So perhaps someone did see him. You know what I mean? It's hard to say. Because no one is talking. And I can guarantee you again, in another week or so, they'll do another interview maybe, and something else will change. They'll add some else to the story. Well, I said to you last time, next time they do a, a, an interview, It'll be, he will show more concern towards his wife, right? Now, she was in the background, really. You could hear, you could hear something going on in the background. And so she was listening, but she was doing other stuff. That's how we knew about, she heard about the shoes, and she said, I'm not telling you how many shoes he's got, but I can account for more, or something like that. Doesn't make sense. So it I am the you're back. So it it's just weird. And it annoys me to think that they are he will only talk to people who will kiss the ground he walks on. I'm sorry. Yes. That done a lot for Sebastian by doing that interview because he got money raised to keep the billboards up and running, right? Got the money out there. But for him to say, oh, he wouldn't do an interview with this one YouTuber because you're just going to make money off his name. You don't make money on YouTube. You really don't. You do it because you love doing it, because you want to get the point out there. I've sat there for over a year thinking, I'd love to be doing YouTube. I'd love to do it. Right? But I only ever had my phone. I didn't have a laptop. So I went out and brought one. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to do the YouTube. So I went out, brought this laptop, and started doing what I'm doing. Only because I'd go on to YouTubers, pages and I've listened to what they're saying and I thought no I'm not going to put a comment up I'm not right and then I thought but I've got so much I want to say about some of these stuff some of these cases that I can't just put it over in one little comment and that's why I started doing this so I can get out my opinion my views right it's my page and I'll say what I want Post what I want, and if I want to post this fundraiser, which I'll do again, I will. Right? So I will keep that fundraiser out there. I'll keep it on my Facebook page, my Twitter account, everything. Because anything can help that father to stay out there looking until they get definite proof that summer has happened or. Sebastian is found and brought home safely. Oh, God, my cat is doing my head in. Good. Right? Um, I will keep pushing this out there. And 
I'm sorry, but some people may not like that. But I'm not going to kiss down, kiss the floor someone walks on just so that I get them to come on my page. No. I wouldn't have them on my page anyway. And if I had 10,000 viewers, subscribers, I wouldn't have them on my page. Right? And if I did, then I wouldn't monetize it. I wouldn't monetize the video. Because you can choose to monetize it or not, I believe. So, because some people say, oh, God, I've just said this, and I think of, oh, well, I just won't monetize it. You know what I mean? They say they don't monetize their videos a lot of them. Right? So, but no. It's weird again how he'll only do live interviews with Duchess, who I think is lovely. Right? So, it's right, mate. Headphones are hurting my ear. But he won't do interviews with certain other YouTubers because he knows where the YouTubers told him he believes himself, the stepfather, and Katie are involved in the disappearance of Sebastian. Until he's given proof that they're not involved, then he's going to stay to that. And the same here. Until I'm given. Definitely freaking proof. They are not involved. Then I will stick to my guns and I think she, they are definitely the stepfather. Definitely the stepfather. Someone got him to come out of that house on a night time on his own. Right? But I don't know who, and we don't know why. But it's just a bit coincidental that he, and, but like I said, if there's been an accident, perhaps his scent was already there because don't forget he's mowed the grass and everything. So that could be, but his scent wouldn't have led up to the construction site. Right? It wouldn't have led up that far. But I think you can cut across the common areas behind the houses. There's gaps between the fencing which you can cut through and go between the houses from one common area to another, which leads you onto the next street. Yeah, I've sent you the link anyway, so share with MG, anyone on Twitter. Please share this link. I will put it in the description. I haven't put that in the description. I will put the link in the description for this. Right? Please share it if you can. Donate. Because it just helps the father to stay out there. This money is just paying his bills, his household bills, his electric, his gas, his whatever else has to be paid, his water, whatever. I don't know what you have to pay over there. Over here, it will be your gas, your electric, your council tax, rent maybe, or mortgage. You know what I mean? So you've got loads of different things over here you have to pay. So please, support the family. Support Seth and his family. And do it this way. But I think it's all wrong that he... He said that uh, he would uh, get the lawyers or someone on to bring harm hand to Sebastian. How is this going to bring harm to Sebastian? I don't understand that. And I don't understand how she could sub sit there and say what, exactly what they did Sunday morning. And she broke it down bit by bit what they did. Now, why didn't she say that in the first interview? We just went about our usual business. Well, what's that? And people kept saying, well, what is that? What was it you did? And she didn't say. Right? And as the one YouTuber said today, he won't, Chris won't do an interview with him. Right? 
because they don't want him making money off the basket. But he's already said any any pay, any money that is made from that interview, he will donate to any charity he thinks it they want. He'll donate it, right? But his wife, Katie, has been putting out uh, that YouTuber, Duchess, putting out her cash app far and wide, sharing that about. I understand the money is going to the billboards, but it's all right for them to do that, but he won't go and do an interview with someone else in case they make money. Right? If you've got a big following and you have someone like Chris on your page, Right, you gotta get a lot more views. You're going to. You only have to look at Summer Moon, Summer Moon Utah well. Every time that father came on and done an interview, the ratings on their shows was going up. Right? And yes, they was making money, people making donations, sending them payments, whatever they do. Right? But that only lasted for a short while. And not, not that much was made. I know there's one YouTuber who said, like, apparently she needs to make a hundred pounds a day on YouTube to keep her channel open. Okay. I don't make hundred dollars a day or a hundred pounds a day. And I'm keeping my YouTube channel open. Right? And so when I hear people like that say things like that, then I think, nope, don't want nothing to do with you. And I won't. Right? And I don't have nothing to do with that one YouTuber who said that. Because in my eyes, she's there for the money only. I've got to have £100 a day to make this, to keep this YouTube. Uh, this uh, page open, my YouTube channel open. Plus, I've watched some YouTubers and sometimes I've only made two dollars. And don't forget, the YouTube companies take 30 percent of every pound, every dollar made, they take 30 percent. So, for every dollar they make, you only get 70 cents, or in my land, in my money, it'd be 70 p. You know what I mean? So they're not making money. So for the stepfather to say that to a YouTuber, I think it was disgusting. Especially when he's on a live and they're making money as well. Because the more subscribers you get as well, you, you get a lot more subscribers join and subscribe to your channel. So, and then they probably actually paid to become a member so that's more money they're making because they're getting say they've got two new members that know it. I don't know how much their membership is it's say two dollars say four dollars she's just made by those two new members some sites are like 3 99 for membership I'm thinking are you joking me I don't think I'm paying like one ninety nine. But I'm not paying three ninety nine. Take a hike. But that's where you make your money from your subscribers. Once you get to a point where you can monetize your site, once you can monetize your page, you can you can monetize it, and then you can have paid memberships. And that's where you really make your money from the paid memberships. But it's not a lot of money, as I said. You only get seven to pay. 70% of every dollar or every pound. So even on your memberships, they take so much of that, I believe. I'd have to look into that. But I just think it was wrong how he sat there doing a live, putting out that YouTuber's cash app and promoting her page before it went live, right? 
but wouldn't go on another won't go on another YouTuber because they don't want him making money off it. Even though the super tuber has messaged him, and I've seen the messages stating nah. Okay. Whatever payments I get made during that live, I will donate to a charity. Chris, Chris hasn't got back to him. I don't know if he has yet, but we'll I'll find out later. But I just found what the mother said about the Sunday morning interesting. And then that bit about how his daughter having his daughter's got nothing to do with Sebastian. Yes, it has. As I said, when you've been getting other child into a home where it, the child is autistic, that child could feel pushed out. Right? Especially if it's his daughter. Oh no, my daughter's done no wrong. Sort of thing. So he could be feel, he could feel pushed out that way. And that might be a reason he wants to go and live with his dad. Right? Because he knows he'll get the take the full attention that he needs from his dad then. If there's someone else in that family and you have a child, he's not gonna get the full attention he needs. And that's when you'll get more meltdowns. And it's not tantrum, so I'm not having a tantrum. It is a pure meltdown. I've been to the shops and my grandson is lying on the floor, screaming. And I've just had to stand there, let him calm down. And once he's calmed down, go down to his level and talk to him. Find out what's upset him. Why is he behaving like that? And let him know that you're listening. So if he said, oh, well, I'm, I can't do this or I can't do that, you say, okay, I'm hearing you. You're not. You're being told you can't do, you can't run around the shop. Okay. Well, it's not safe to run around the shop. So you talk to them. Once they calm down, you can talk to them. But as soon as another child comes on that scene, especially if it's going to be Chris, Chris's uh, daughter, he's going. She's going to be the angel of his, the apple of his eye, isn't it? Isn't she? And if anything has happened to Sebastian. They can't afford for this to get out because he could possibly lose any visiting rights of his daughter or this. You know what I mean? The, the mother, his ex-wife, has already put in um, a watching aid to stop his daughter from his, to get full custody of his daughter, of the daughter, which means he'd have no custody rights at all of her. She put it in about a week after Sebastian went missing. And isn't it funny, they did that interview about a week after Sebastian went missing. I find it funny that they did that interview a week after that Sebastian went missing. Uh, was it the same day or the next day after the police said they were scaling back the search? And looking at the investigation side of it, which we all know is a criminal investigation. Whatever investigation is it? Please tell us if there's another investigation. And please tell us, because it's not a search. You're not searching no more. Unless you get credible tip. You're not out there searching. You're out there asking questions. And we interview everyone again. So I just hope the TBI don't let this go like they did some of Wells. Because I, I truly believe with some of Wells, the parents could have been arrested and charged for child neglect, if, if, if nothing else. But they haven't been. Now, they can't be done for child neglect because they've not had any social services or anything or any complaints about them at all. So they couldn't do it for that. So I don't think he was neglected. I think he was loved by his mother. But I just think Chris found it a bit harder 
to accept to adjust to a, a child with autism because as I said Chris is very controlling it's my way or no way and you can't be like that with a child with autism you can't because you have to see from you have to literally walk in that child's shoes you do you have to see it from how they see it and how they think about things right they see things totally different they have a look on a life totally different to you to me right they don't see any danger at all they really don't my grandson will walk up, as i said many times walk up to a complete stranger hello oh, i'm doing this today or oh, i'm doing this today at school and we're like you can't do that ellis you can't just walk up to complete strangers please and as i said you just gotta keep reinforcing that and reinforcing it hopefully as he gets older he'll learn that a lot more especially with the school and all the support he's got around him he'll learn it more but he's one for going up to complete strangers that's why my son needs where he is at the moment knowing a, a flat a flat with a what they call a communal garden so it's not just the flat in that one block it's the block next to him as well so there's like one two three four five six or seven and six or seven in each block right so you think that's 14 families if that's how it works something like that right between 12 and 14 and they share this garden it's a bigger garden it's a big garden right but my grandson can either come back into the block he lives and go out the front door onto the onto the street or he can cut through the other block and out their door onto the street now my son needs a house where it's an enclosed garden where they've got their own garden where it's not shared so we can go and play out there without any worries without having to worry about who is he playing with oh god does he upset that child you know what i mean and with its own back gate which can be locked so we can't get out onto the main street you know what I mean? Because it's too open at the moment for my grandson. So when he's out there, they are, have to literally either be down there with him or be in the kitchen looking out the window watching him. And as soon as he disappears, they call him. And if he don't come back, they are down there. And he might just be up a corner out of sight. But it's they down there. Where's he gone? Right? So... But you don't go out there that often on his own. You're not allowed to, really. Occasionally, well, I say you're not allowed to. Occasionally, they allow him to go out the back on his own. But not very often. Anyway, as I said, when you work, when you've got an autistic child, you have to look at that. Totally different to how you normally would. And it does open your eyes. You know what I mean? It opens your eyes big and wide too. You know what I mean? I'm walking down the street and I'm having a conversation with my grandson who's talking about uh, meteorites coming down and robots taking over. And I have to join in with that conversation even when I'm on public transport. We're talking about robots taking over the world and all this like i'm going oh but they're in hiding now let's make our run for it now meaning let's run to the flat now right to the block where i live so they can't see us and that's how i have to talk with him when we're out and about because that's his way of thinking and he'll always take this sword with him and i go why do you want your sword to protect you from all the bad robots out there 
So that's his way of thinking. His imagination is wild. But you've got to go along with that way of thinking with him. Because then he'll turn around if you don't get it. You just don't understand, do you? You don't know. But then sometimes when I am join when I do join in with that sort of conversation, his way of thinking he'll go. Not for real though. It's only it's only make make believe. I go, yeah, I know. I know it's only make believe. So he knows it's it's only make believe. But that's his way of thinking as well. So it's not easy being any parent or grandparent to a child with autism. Because you do have to change your way of thinking. And if you're controlling then it's not going to work if you're a controlling person, which I truly believe the stepfather is very controlling. I truly believe then I think there was problems in that household with the stepfather and Sebastian, or even with the stepfather and the mother. Perhaps the mother didn't like the way he put he, the, punish, the punishment he was handing out. We don't know what the punishments were. Like, I agree with what the mother said. She said, when he's having a meltdown or something, she'll say, she'll send him to his room because that's his safe place to calm down. And that's what I do. I say, go to your bedroom, to, right? Just calm down. And that's what his mum and dad do. They say, Ellis, go to your bedroom, five minutes, calm down. So he goes to his bedroom, five, ten minutes later, he's calm. Uh, but sometimes it can be a bit longer, especially if they're having a right mouth down and they try to the bedroom. But I seriously think something happened on a Sunday night because of what the father said. And I don't like how the stepfather was throwing the, the bio father under the bus. I don't like going there because his dad smokes. Oh yes, yeah, where am I going to bus? Why not? What a bad dad he is, he smokes. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't smoke in the house when, you know what I mean? I'm sure he goes outside to have a cigarette. So, anyway, that's all I've got for tonight was that interview and that info that the father, the stepfather kept relating to and I went back to it twice. It does not clear them. It does not clear the parents. Right? And to be honest with you, a polygraph or whatever it is, they could say, yeah, you passed, but really, they may have failed somewhere. There may be one or two questions because they've showed where it showed uh it doesn't say they they are guilty or innocent. It just shows them whether they're being deceptive in what they're saying with their answers. So they might have one or two answers questions where they've shown being deceptive on. But the police might not be saying that to them. Yeah, you passed. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? And those questions that are being deceptive on them, the police can pick up on that a bit more and look into it a bit more before actually pulling them back in and saying, well, you know the polygraph, you did show you being deceptive on this. You know what I mean? Sometimes I'll tell them straight away, you know, you're being deceptive because they, they've lied literally all the way through. But if it's just maybe one or two, they might not tell them. Because I think, well, if we tell them, we haven't really got enough evidence yet on that. Let's find more information on why they're being deceptive on those questions before we pull them back in. Anyway, it's gone 11 in the UK. So I'm going to say good night. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for listening to me rambling on. 
and I will see you all tomorrow. I don't know yet what it'll be about. Uh, I might do, no, 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 I can't do one in the afternoon. I was going to do one in the afternoon, but I can't because I've got to play. Right, it's my birthday tomorrow and I've got to go to my son's. So I'll be home there on the evening. So it'll be on the evening. So, mm, I did want to do one on Elijah. Because there's been a new update. But I might just talk about Elijah tomorrow night. But it'll probably be Sebastian again. Because Madeline Soto at the moment, I can't. It's just, I can't talk about that guy. I can't, without physically f feeling sick. Uh, I will if I have to, but one night this week, as well, I'm doing a live on another case, but I've got to get more information on that. I've been asked to cover it, and I, it has gone to court and all this life, but she's asked me to cover it, so I said I would. So that'll probably be, that might be in the afternoon, I might do that one. So that might be Wednesday afternoon. I don't know yet. But I'll let you know what tomorrow, you'll see it anyway, because I'll, if you subscribe to my YouTube, you'll see it all come up. Um, if you're on Twitter, I'll put a post up letting you know that I'm going live. Right, so that you can be here. So, once again, thank you to everyone from Twitter and YouTube for being here. And just keep that lag in your thoughts because it needs to be brought home. One way or the other, it needs to be brought home. Okay, so before I go, let's do this. Please hit the like button. Hit the bell, subscribe, comment and share. Hit the like button most because that does help with getting this video out there. So please, if you've liked what you've heard, what you're seeing, leave me a comment and do get back to you. Sometimes if it's a comment where I, I feel I need to reply to it, I will reply. Other times if it's on Twitter, I'll just do like a little hearty emotion just to say I've acknowledged your message. Right, if you're on YouTube, leave me a message, I do get back to you. So if you're watching it on replay, leave me a message, I will get back to you. So until then, thank you for being here, and good night. Thank you.